All right. Uh, defense company Science Applications International Corp. hosting its Investor Day. The company is expected to outline its multi-year growth strategy. Joining us now to talk about that and the challenges shaping the world economy and security landscape, Tony Towns Whitley, Science Applications International Corp. CEO and the CNBC CEO Council Member. Welcome. Good morning. Great. Good morning. Thank you. Um, been at the company, what, six months or so in the job? And yes. you've asked, announced a reorganization. Um, what's, your, I guess, going to be your top line message today to investors about kind of reviving organic growth and, and your key priorities? Yeah. So we're going to outline a four pivot strategy, four pivots of the organization we're making across our portfolio, our go to market, our culture, and our brand. And all of that's going to accrue to an accelerated growth rate on the top line that's going to drive the EBITDA that, quite frankly, is going to uh, allow us to grow back into mid-single digit, which is where our market is, which we haven't been for the last few years. Additionally, we're going to continue on our path on just converting to free cash flow, which is we've had a very strong track record, and we're going to continue that. In fact, we're growing 10 percent and going to talk about that in terms of what it looks like over the next three years. You know, I guess um, increasingly, probably it's always been the case, but, you know, uh, defense advantage or capacity is technological advantage in a, to a large degree. So. How does your business fit into all yeah. that, especially in light of AI and all the, the sure. new technologies? When you think about what SAIC does, for the last 55 years we've been serving primarily in national security, but also across government civilian agencies. But what we do fundamentally is integrate. We integrate emerging technology in a secure, real-time way into mission-critical operations for national security. So think about how the Department of Defense and the intelligence communities, they want more and more commercial tech. But you have to understand the mission. You have to understand real-time capability. So we will talk today, and we've talked to the market about differentiators on secure data, on secure cloud capability, on operational AI, which is where we focus our AI capability, things like digital engineering. These are the unique technologies are now part of integrating in a new threat environment and how the Department of Defense is going to go for the warfighter and support the warfighter. Look, a, a huge part of the threat that the nation's worried about, their government's worried about, but also CEOs. We just spoke about a KPMG survey that looked at top CEOs, cyber attacks sure. and the potential for that. Yeah. As we get more and more integrated, how do you keep yourself safe? Yeah, so we, we really see it as threefold. A lot of times you'll hear about zero trust architectures or zero trust environments. We integrate that all the way in through everything we build, which is assume no trust, no capability initially, and you have to prove access and the ability uh, to uh, access data at different levels. The other thing that we have to understand is the way we, the warfighter uh, operation happens today requires the integration of data from so many different sources yeah. and, that's, and so many different classification levels. So we talk about multi-level security. How do we then bring data just in time, just for the individual has access to that data, to be able to make decisions in a real-time, sometimes a wartime environment. And then and so, shut it off again. The, and then shut it off again. So that's really where we actually, our expertise is around secure data analytics. We use platforms and capabilities. The, also, you have to understand the operational environment, and that's where we think we're different. Is it harder, though? Are there nation-state attacks that are coming, whether that be from Iran, from China? Has it gotten harder and harder every single year? Particularly harder, and particularly in the area of sort of a counter UAS, which is the unmanned aerial systems, which we see as one of the largest attack vectors for our warfighter. There's a lot of technology that helps us in countering that kind of attack, swarm attacks around the world. That's actually one of the areas that we differentiate. As relates to your business, um, federal budget uh, issues? I mean, is it is just sort of a constant, yeah. or is it, it, do you yeah. feel like it's more pressure? We than live in a, a CR environment. We call it the continuing resolution environment. Look, it was, it was great to get one out in March, and yet, as we know, a CR really represents a cut for most agencies, right? With inflation, it's a, it becomes a cut. Uh, my, probably number one thing I hear from our defense and national security customers is the concern, like that there's an external threat, but the internal threat, if you will, feels like the budget environment, not having the stable budget environment being able to go forward. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the major issues that we deal with. At the end of the day, uh, we do see that there is some reduced spend on the R&D side uh, so that we can do multi, you know, current, current delivery. But our hope is that we stabilize this environment. That's what our customers want as well. All right. Tony, great to catch up with you. Thanks great so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.